The topic of conversation this afternoon is project management. Uh, and so if you look at the names of the companies uh, that are represented here today, you'll see that there's a variety of ages uh, of companies and a variety of uh, industries uh, in, in, involved here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with just a little bit of context from each one of them about their environment uh, and what they mean uh, by project management and what it means in their organizations. So specifically, what I'm going to ask you to answer questions for is, tell us a little bit about uh, the, your organization, the applications that you're responsible for, roughly how many of them there are, where they fit on the continuum between the waterfall technology or uh, applications through Agile to CI and CD. Uh, talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, your, uh, what role project managers play in that environment, about how many application developers you have, how many project managers you have as a ratio, uh, what the project manager's role is. Do you have program managers and project managers, or you just have project managers, you know? What does that mean to you? So just give us a little context, each one of you, and uh, uh, Radhika, we'll start with you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm in uh, Verizon Information Technology, but supporting our uh, global enterprise business, which is really our B2B business. We operate in about 82 countries around the world, and uh, you know our revenue profile is about $27 billion. What we really sell is infrastructure. We sell, we sell cloud, security, network solutions, applications, and it is a mix of carrier technology as well as uh, third-party products. So when you think about Verizon Enterprise Services, in some ways you're thinking about high tech, you're thinking about manufacturing, you're thinking about construction, you're thinking about professional services because all of that has to come together in order to really provide solutions to our Fortune 500 companies around the world as well as federal governments around the world. We also operate in the medium business segment, which is another two, three hundred companies, mostly in the USA. So that's sort of the backdrop. I'm in IT. Uh, I have responsibility for what we call as uh, point of sale systems, the configure price quote systems, because in a B2B business, it's a very contractual buy with a very lengthy sale process. I also have the ordering platforms, which is really then used for delivering our services, which is, again, not a click and you get your service. It's days and sometimes into weeks because we actually install network services in all of these countries around the world. And I also have responsibility for business intelligence. More importantly, over the past three years, we've been going through a transformation journey in Verizon Enterprise Services, which itself is a collection of about 75 mergers and uh, trying to basically rationalize our products, eliminate our systems, and build a whole new standard global operating method versus everybody building their own made in that country process. So your, your span of applications, how do they fit into so the So we waterfall? started off about three years ago with a little over 800 applications supporting what I just described. Um, you know, we've done a pretty nice job of declaring what's directional, what's non-directional, and going after, you know, cutting all the investments in the non-directional and eliminating them and right now, we sit at close to 400 or so applications. So we've taken out the rest in the last two and a half years. We have some more to go, another 100 to take out. Now, in this ecosystem, even when you are left with 350, it's not all equally sized. There would be about uh, you know, 35 to 40 very major applications. And the rest would be generally tools and sub-processes that support them. Uh, our organization is global. My organization is global. I have people in about 12 countries around the world. Um, we have them you know, in about 100 plus buildings or locations, 18 states in the US. They span everywhere from Australia all the way to uh, you know, the west coast of the United States. We don't have them in Alaska and Hawaii. So uh, you know, it makes it a pretty challenging task to build software and roll it out and continue to maintain them and do all of the transformation we need to do given the enormous amount of communication and collaboration that needs to happen so across the time zones. So how many developers do you have, software engineers maybe, and roughly how many project managers do you so, have? So we, uh, we in all of IT, and I'll, I'll talk about my organization uh, specifically as well, all of uh, information technology supporting the enterprise have in the neighborhood of 4,000 software engineers around the world. In my own team, we have close to about 1,000 people. And, uh, you know, 
some of them, a, a big, about 48% of them are actually in what I would call as offshore centers. They are in Peru, Argentina, India, and the rest of them we call onshore only because they're more high priced. But I mean, really, it's not all USA, so they're in more higher price locations. Project managers, uh, we don't really call them just project managers. We have actually two types of principal roles in the organization. One role is really what I would call as a, a client account manager type of a role, where their role is not just in delivering a software to production, but really in validating everything from business input all the way to adoption, and really making sure that the investment that was made is returning the prescribed ROI of that business case. Then there are people who are more PMs or project managers, as you may think of, but they are more in the development engineering organizations responsible for delivering big systems. We don't even track people that are responsible for code modules and so on. So roughly how many of them do you have? Uh, we have about uh, anywhere from, uh, you know, I would say in my organization about 100 people <coughs> that would range from project management, development management to client account so management. So 10% of your organization? 10% of the organization. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Nick, why don't we go to you next? Sure. Um, I'm Nick Sate. I'm uh, relatively new to Amex, so some of these numbers I'll give you uh, ballpark ranges because I, I don't actually know them yet. Um, I'm learning them as I go. Uh, when Bashir asked me to be part of this, uh, this panel, uh, I sort of scratched my head, as probably many of you who I've known for many years uh, are doing the same, because anything to do with management, I sort of eschew, and certainly anything to do with project management is even further away from my comfort zone. But uh, as we talked, uh, you know, we, we, we were trying to figure out what, what, what can I add to the table uh, to this conversation. And it was really around how do we as technologists, as CTOs, as leaders of, uh, of technology organizations ensure project success and less about project management. So very often we've sort of almost focused too much on, uh, on absolutely necessary, but what I believe today is insufficient aspects of project management, project tracking, making sure that, uh, that, that, that you're you know, on top of the timelines and on top of budget. And, uh, and as Eric Ries most recently uh, wrote, you know, delivering the wrong thing on time and on budget is sort of almost irrelevant. So uh, at Amex, my role is a little bit different than what a traditional large uh, organizational CTO role might be. While I still have the uh, the, the more governance aspects and, and reference architecture aspects of, uh, of the organization, uh, some of the more forward-thinking architectures. I also have our digital platform. So I'm responsible for AmericanExpress.com. Uh, all of you, hopefully, are card members and have used that platform. If you haven't, there's a bunch of great new stuff on there. You should try it. Uh, and I'm also responsible for our global uh, mobile application. So we have about 16 mobile applications uh, for various different uh, customer segments. Um, and, um, and I own it pretty much end-to-end -end from product management all the way through, uh, through engineering and delivery. So um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the numbers, uh, so my, uh, the way that American Express is organized is pretty typical. I think I see some names that are, that are probably of the same size or bigger than, uh, than, than us, but uh, our overall technology organization is about 16,000 people, if you, uh, if you count it all, including uh, employees and contractors. Uh, my team is about 3,500. Um, and of that, probably 15% are what we would classify as managing delivery. Uh, as opposed to doing engineering work. So, um, and and that's, that comes in many shapes and forms, whether it's project managers, product managers. Um, we, are, we have been on a, uh, on a two year journey to transform the organization uh, to be more agile, agile as the verb, not necessarily agile as a noun uh, with the uppercase A. Uh, and I think I would largely say my portfolio is almost 100% now iterative. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we do sprints, we don't necessarily release at the end of every sprint, uh, just because of the nature of some of the products that we uh, that, that that we have. Uh, but certainly, we've gone from you know two major releases a year down to releases every two weeks uh, across the portfolio, not in not in the same area. Um, so we're we're going through that transformation as as we speak. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Nat and I sort of uh, have, have many shared experiences um, and uh, very similar to what, what we did at PayPal um, uh, is, the, is the journey that we're on uh, at Amex. 
Thank you very much. So Will, being in the gaming industry is very different from those two, and you might enjoy having 3,500 guys on your development team. I don't know. So tell us a little bit about your story. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so I'm the CEO of Kickside. We do games, primarily games as a service. So we take a bit of a hybrid approach when it comes to development methodologies. For the first version of a game, we typically utilize something that looks more like a waterfall uh, process. Post-launch, when we're in kind of iterative dev cycles, it's much more agile. So we know specific, we know exactly what we want before we, we bring a product to market. And then once it's there, we let qualitative and quantitative data dictate exactly what we're doing next. So agile is certainly more appropriate. Um, you know, I'm of the school of thought where the, the, the larger a team is, the more dysfunctional it becomes. Uh, so we keep things very much siloed into individual studios. So we have about eight to 10 game teams running at any given time, ranging between 20 to 70 people in terms of size. Um, and we try to keep the management overhead pretty low. Uh, we certainly have project managers uh, and product managers, but for the team leads and the different pods and structures like that, we make sure that everybody kind of shares project management responsibility. You know, I think it's human nature to want to co compartmentalize um, different thought processes into the embodiment of one person, and I frankly just reject that. <clears throat> I think a lot of people are very smart, and they can adapt to different functions uh, within a team and can share responsibility around management without diluting their core individual contributor responsibilities. And that's not to be said that every, I expect every individual engineer to have some sort of project management responsibilities, but certainly team leads and things like that should be doubling as project managers to reduce overhead. When you have more, I've found that when you have more, and I've certainly worked at much larger companies, um, but when you have more lines and dots between people, that's where the inefficiency comes in. Of course, the most efficient team I've ever had is a team of one, where that person is the product manager, designer, and engineer. Um, you're talking to yourself, you're telling yourself what to build, you're just communicating your right and your left hand. Um, unfortunately, we don't have many of those superhumans at the company, so we have to hire more people to do those things. So we simply try to eliminate inefficiencies in the, in the form of connections between people. Thank you. Matt? Um, so you guys heard about what my role was, so I'll, I'll, I'll just spend time on some of the other questions. So we have about close to 1,200 uh, people supporting the uh, TurboTax business, and about uh, eight or nine percent of them are project manager, program manager uh, roles. 100% of our team is doing agile development, or they've been on this journey for the last uh, 12 to 18 months. One, one distinction that I'll draw out, Paul, is um, you know, I, I look at program project management as a role and a capability that every manager or lead has to have. I think it's, it's, it's embedded in their journey. And I look at more of the role of what I call the program manager as a strategic weapon. It's not a tactical weapon to be deployed every time you have you know day-to-day -day tasks, but more of a strategic weapon where there are initiatives which require coordination across multiple teams or multiple business units, which has to get done. That's how I, I am thinking about the program management role within my, my team. And about how many of those do you have, do you think? Uh, pardon me? About how many of those program manager roles do you have in your organization? You know, not as much as I need. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not the numbers here again. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's about having the few key individuals who can do this. Mm -hmm.